Now it is time to celebrate what was a very successful September on the Wire Not Home Services three degree guarantee. Of course, a partnership with Fox 21 and Wire Not Home Services. Right. Trent Durbin's here with us from Good Wire Not. Thanks for being here. And Catherine Roosevelt is here. She is the board chair of the Pikes Peak Children's Museum. Catherine, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I have full disclosure here. We had a perfect month going on this thing until the last <laughs> day I screwed it up. Oh. It was a very, very good month, but we were one short of perfection. It's kind of like Which running a marathon, then you just fall right Fall at the end. That's yeah. exactly what yeah. it's like, Trent. Very, very yeah. good. Good, very job, good analogy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, Catherine, it was a good month, though, and tell me about the Pikes Peak Children's Museum because it's been an interesting journey for yeah. you guys. Trent and I have kids that are about the same age, and we went to some of the things when my kids were little. You know, they're getting into college now and that sort of thing, but tell us about the Pikes Peak Children's Museum. Yeah, the Pikes Peak Children's Museum is a 501c3. It formed back in 2005, so okay. we are actually going on 20 years okay. of this effort of establishing a permanent children's museum space here in yes. Colorado Springs and was that like there it, there has been a permanent home right but then it kind of for whatever the reasons are like goes away but you guys have done a great job of I think staying visible in the community and and still providing the museum experience for kids right there's been multiple efforts um, when the organization originally started they were trying to build a 14 million dollar 40,000 square foot space downtown but that was also along the lines of when the Olympic Museum project mm, was emerging yeah, right. so um, unfortunately they couldn't get that off the ground um, post COVID we had some volunteers who went and established a place down off airport and circle and we we had that for a little while, but um, due to some um, rent increases and safety concerns and just kind of overall uh, lack of support from our landlord and stuff, we decided okay. to refocus, regroup, um, take the last year, year and a half to really establish what it is that we want to be doing in this community. Okay, so tell me about where where that is now because you do have some important news yeah so we've worked up to obtaining some new board members we have a professional fundraiser on board okay. and we have signed um, a temporary lease at 117 South Wasatch okay. um, our landlord Kevin O'Neill with the O'Neill group has been very generous and working with us towards um, organizing a timeline as far sure. as fundraising and uh, designing and executing our exhibits for the space. So I'll come back to you and ask about the importance of a children's museum in a community in a second, but I wanna ask Trent that, right? Like you're the parent of kids. Yeah. It, it's, it's important for, for a city to have places for kids to go and learn and experience things. It is, and it seems like there's maybe ebbs and flows in that. I remember some places that used to be around that were, you know, for profit, but they're gone. They were fun. Right. Something to engage the kids, get them thinking, keep them, you know, keep them moving. They, they need to be active. Right. This one being that it's a nonprofit and it's a community-based, mm -hmm. even better. Right. So we need, we need things like this. We're, you know, we're a city or a, a town kind of coming on to being a city right. here. If, right. You know, yeah. we need we're things wrong. like that for, yeah, for entertainment, sure. for learning, for all of that. Yeah. Tell us about some of the things you guys have done as you've been maybe, you know, a little nomadic along the way, because you've had some really cool events still. Yeah, we've kind of had this philosophy of being a museum without walls is what it's called. Yep. And so we've formed relationships throughout the city with other organizations like Who Gives a Scrap, Concrete Couch, the Fine Arts Center, um, the Mining Museum up north, um, all of these organizations and the Olympic Museum as well. Mm -hmm. We've kind of worked together so that when they have events, we will bring um, activities and some exhibits for kids to utilize and we do like a stories and steam once a month at again who gives a scrap in the Westside Community Center yeah. so we keep our mission alive by being out in the public and out and partnering with these other organizations to help bring kids to their doors as well yeah and there's been a cool New Year's Eve that oh, you guys yeah. have had for like 18 years yeah 18 as well. years now we had a New Year's Eve party where on the 31st we have a party for kids we ring in the new year at noon um, we do a big balloon drop the kids get to have um, some like you know apple cider whatever and fancy glasses it's fun. It's and fun. they yeah it's a great time so parents don't feel guilty about putting their kids to bed still <laughs> in right. a normal time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Trent, why is it important to wire nut to be part of community, you know, things that are trying to better the community like we highlight every month? 
Uh, well, yeah, like you said, we do this every month, and we're, we're always based on some kind of a community uh, event, of course, being that we're given to nonprofits. Our alignment is typically, we try to keep it geared more towards kids, more towards military. This is a perfect alignment of that. Start everybody off right, keep them engaged, keep them excited, keep them moving, keep life ex you know, exciting and interesting. Right. This is one of those methods. It, it is for sure. Catherine, last question for you. If someone wants to learn more about the Pikes Peak Children's Museum, if they want to get involved, or more importantly, if they want to financially support, how can they do that? Yeah, check out pikespeakchildrensmuseum.org, or you can email me at Catherine at Pikes, or Catherine at ppcm4kids.org. Um, and yeah, we have a donation page on our website. Email me personally, and I'll help you, you know, find the right place if you want to get involved. And um, yeah, I look forward to talking to the community more. Awesome. Well, 10,000 square feet coming soon. We hope this $1,740 <laughs> from Why or Not and Fox 21 <laughs> helps. Trent, thank you so much for thank making you. this possible. Thank you. Thank you. We're about to go over $90,000 yeah, in what we incredible. have supported in our yes. community. If you have a local nonprofit that's important to you, you'd like us to consider for November, go to fox21news.com, search three degree guarantee. Catherine, Trent, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And good job on the near 100%. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can get it this month because yeah. we're perfect so far. I've yeah. got the forecast coming. This portion.